Hey, what's going on, guys? Root of the Null here, coming back at you with another Python tutorial. Let's get idle started up, and let's see what we can do here. Now, before I create a new window here, a new script, I want to show you guys the function that we're going to be taking a look at today. Um, we're going to be working with the list data types, just like we have been in the last couple of videos and tutorials. And uh, remember, those are the data types that are denoted with these two braces, or these two brackets. And then the data would be in uh, like commented in between them. So if we did like this is a list and I'll put in a uh, isn't it actually is that right how about that make sure everything is inside your string variables alright <clears throat> now what we can do here is you can use our dot selector and see what we can run with these uh, with this data type. We can what sort of functions we can run, sort of actions we can call, and that sort of thing. So if you use a uh, control space, you can have this little window pop up or this little uh, this little menu sort of thing, and you can see the functions that you can run with these. Now some of these we've already taken a look at, but today we're going to check out the remove function. And uh, if we pass in our or at least we type in our two parentheses and we get inside them, when we do control backslash, we can see what we have to be working with here. So you might not be able to see this here, but it says removes the first occurrence of value, and value is the uh, mandatory parameter that we would pass to the function. So if we pass in uh, is, it'll remove the first occurrence of is. So this one right here, right after the this. But it won't it won't remove this one, because that's not the first occurrence. So if we uh, if we run this, you're going to see nothing happens because we aren't getting returned anything. What this function does is it doesn't return anything, but instead modifies the original variable. And since we can't check out what this data is anymore, we should we should probably set it up in a val in a variable. So let's do x equals and then that list that we set up. We run this and we get x. Now x is uh this is a list, is that right? And now if we do x dot remove and we can run is we pass in is anyway. And we check out x once more after we've done calling that function. We get this a list. Is that right? Because is that first occurrence of is and that value is has been removed, hence the function name and everything. Now there are a lot of interesting things we can do with this, but there are still some quirks that some programmers may like, some programmers may not like. I myself don't like the idea that the function is modifying my original variable. I want to be able to choose, okay, which which variables that the function returns are going to be controllable and which aren't and that sort of thing. So when we create this today, I'm not going to have it modify the original value, and uh, I don't suggest that you do that sort of thing. But hey, to each their own. <laughs> Obviously, in programming, there are many ways you can do one specific task, and that's kind of the the beauty of it, and kind of the one of the scarier parts that you never know which is the real right way or the real best way to do something. But hey, uh, when we cre when we create this function ourselves as well, what we can do here is uh, we could we could potentially pass in other arguments. Like we could determine where we should start removing, or where we could end, or um, or where we could um, let's see how many times you want to remove it, that sort of thing. Have it remove all things, or have it just remove this first occurrence, and you know you know how it goes. <laughs> so, but I'm not going to do that in this tutorial. Uh, you can do that if you're on your own if you'd like. Obviously, with, with these last tutorials, you can uh, probably figure out the method or the way that we're doing this. So, in our case, uh, let's get started, though. But before we begin, let's check it out if we try and remove something that isn't in there. What if we just passed in Z? It gives us a value error. So we can work with this again in our in our function here. But, uh, hey, let's, let's begin. I'm going to create a new window. Save this as uh, file.python file.python, not file.put. Apparently I do that too often. Get our started with a shebang line, US bin environment, Python, we can do a class. Define our constructor with the initialize keyword wrapped in two underscores on either end. Pass in the self keyword as always, because you should do that for every function that you declare inside of a class. And outside of our class, in the global scope, we can test if name is equal to main. What that will do is it'll let us determine whether or not this is the uh, the real script that we're running. Now inside that conditional statement, we can create an object for our class our base class, and everything that's inside the constructor will happen automatically, because when you initialize an object, uh, everything in that constructor will be run. So let's try it. Uh, I'm not going to use the self variable preceding my keywords today, at least preceding my, 
I'm not going to use the self cured preceding my variables today. I think I, I think I said that wrong. <laughs> but yeah, I don't plan on using this. I think you guys understand the the concept of using the self cured. It helps you realize, okay, this is a value for the uh, for this specific object and that sort of thing. But it is sort of optional. So if I do array. And set this up is uh, actually I think I have the original array still copied. There we go. Now if we print out array, we can see here this is a list. Is that right? And I'm gonna I'm gonna add some new lines on here so we can see what other things we're working with. And remember, if we're concatenating, all of the variables have to be a string. So I'm gonna turn the array into a string with our str function, and I can type cast it or convert that sort of thing. And now we can still display it, and we have some new lines on here. So let's uh let's try this again. Let's do array, then we can remove is. Now remember, this isn't gonna return anything, so we don't have to pass it to the print function. But we should afterwards print out the array. And I'm not going to concatenate anything on here, so we don't have to run that string function. But now, is, or at least the first occurrence of is, is gone. Right after that this word, in the first index, uh, index 0. <laughs> but now let's let's try and recreate this all on our own. Let's do uh, define. And this is, uh, this is a little bit more of a experimental thing, as you guys know. So I could screw up. <laughs> we're going to need the self keyword. We obviously need the array that we're working with. And uh, let's need the value. So now what we can do is we can uh, you know, find some things here. We can do a new array. A new array is going to be filled with all the values except the one that we're removing. So we can set up. Actually, we're going to want to loop through it, first of all, for character. Not, not so much character because it's not a string. If we do for item, I think that's a better name for our variable. For item inside of array, we can test if... The value is not new array. I'm sorry, if the value if value is equal to item. So if item is equal to value, that's probably a better way to to write this condition out. So if we find something that isn't what we're trying to remove, then we can just go ahead and add it to the new array. So new array plus equals, we're using our assignment operator here with using the plus equals, so it's a relative addition. And uh, we can add in the value, I'm oh, sorry, the item, and that should work. So now if we if we run this, first let's put it up, or put it up here in our constructor, and then after we're done looping anyway, we should return the new array inside of our function. I almost forgot. But now we can print out remove and we can run array and we can pass in is. So let's run this and see what happens. Global name remove is not defined. Okay, yeah, we need the self keyword here because that's inside our that's inside our class. So you do need the self keyword if you're defining functions or at least calling functions inside of your class. So if we run this, we get this is a list. Is that right? And obviously that is the uh, the first one that we've printed out. That's the real array. And now when we check out ours, we have this a list. That right? So, wait a second. It removed both occurrences of is. We haven't checked for anything else. So what we should do is test if we uh, um, have or not. So what we can do here is actually set up a boolean variable. So I'm going to call mine still removing. Before we loop, I'm going to set this as true. And uh, if item is not... Array else what we need to do is if we are still removing if we did find what we were not looking for what we can do is if we're still removing we can do still removing can be set to false So now in our original conditional statement, we're going to test if the item is not equal to the value. So if it is, we're just going to completely ignore it. But instead, let's see. If we're not still removing, we can do is we can add it to the current array. So new array plus equals and pass in the item that we found. Now we run this, we get this a list. Is that right? So we found the first one, but we were still removing. So because the item is not 
I'm sorry, the item is equal to the value, we will go down to our else statement here, and then we'll test if we're still removing. And in our case, we are still removing, so what we'll do is we'll set still removing to false, and we won't add it. We won't add it to the new array. But now we keep going through the items again and again and again, and eventually we get to that next, the other is value inside of our array. So now we're testing it again, and because the item is equal to the value, we're going to go down to our else statement, but we aren't still removing anymore, so we're going to get this else statement, and then we can add it to the new array. So we get the, uh, the same functionality as what we did in the original built-in function here, but we're still returning the new array, so we aren't being modified inside our function. So this is kind of a good thing. If we do, uh, when we're done printing that out, we can print out the original that we've got here, print out array, and you can see this is the original. But if we did array is equal to self.remove, we can pass in our array here, and then we can remove is, or at least the first occurrence of is, we run this, and we've already set that variable, now we can print it out, we can print out an array, and now we get this a list, is that right? So we've done everything that we have that we have here, we have been able to uh, decide whether or not we want to change our variable or not, but we can still get the information of what it would be if we had removed it, and that sort of thing, so we've done our job here. And now remember, if you wanted to, you could make this function a whole lot more advanced now that you know the way that it works. You could decide where you want to start iterating from if you want to do that. You could be like, you could be counting through the array that you're looping through and then index them, indexing them with that incrementer variable that we've set up, like for i in range, and you can use a start and end variable to see where you're going to start removing from, that sort of thing. You could, uh, you could decide how many times you want to remove something. You could do it as many times as you'd like, or you could set it up only once or twice, and that sort of thing. So there's a lot you can work with this, you can, I'm sorry, there's a lot you can do with this function, but you kind of have to know how to set it all up, and if you watch some of the tutorials, I'm sure you'll catch on to the way we set things up, especially in the, in the previous tutorials, because we've done a lot of these interesting things with strings, with list data types, and you know, we can only go onward from here. So, <laughs> thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this little tutorial here, uh, I hope you will be able to remove things from your list, <laughs> and it'll keep things easy for you. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.